In my last video, I had mentioned that one of the greatest things that I've done for myself as a technical sound designer was to branch out into non-audio specific areas. So in an effort to help you guys do the same, today we're gonna to be taking a look at data layers. Data layers are great because they allow level designers the ability to load and unload chunks of assets on command or change scenes off camera, or they can really help small play areas feel much, much larger. So let's go ahead and jump into Unreal Engine and take a look at an example. So we're here in the engine, and as you can see, I just have this empty arena with this little hallway. And if we go ahead and hit play on this, that is what the player sees. We're in this empty arena and the hallway. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this hallway. And now it doesn't seem like anything happened. However, if we look to our left, well, now there's a house. And in true video game logic, if there is something new, we must check it out. So we're gonna go ahead and head on into this house. And we can see that it's empty, but it is kind of lit up. We still have our arena with our tunnel. Well, let's try going upstairs. Well, if we go upstairs, we notice out this window, well, there's grass out there now. That wasn't out there before. We turn around, we can see through the window that there appears to be a tree in the front yard. And so if we head back downstairs to check it out, you can see that our arena is now gone. We have a landscape, some trees, some hedges, this little walkway, and our mailbox. And if we turn around and head back inside, we'll notice, well, our house is now furnished. We've got a little kitchen area, a dining room, living room, a little desk workspace, some stuff on the walls, some lighting fixtures, and things like that. And this is all done with data layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna face back out the front door and hit escape. And you'll notice we are right back in this arena with our hallway. And now to show you what's going on behind the scenes, I'm gonna pull my data layer window over. And if you don't have this window, uh, you can get it by going up to Window, World Partition, and it is your data layers outliner. And so I'm gonna move this over here just a little bit. And you can see in my data layers window that I have four different data layers. Currently, data layers two, three, and four are hidden, and data layer one is visible. So with data layer one, if I hit my G key here so that all of the little invisible things pop up, you'll notice that in this hallway, I do actually have a little blueprint. And what this blueprint is, is the two, here we go. It is just a blueprint that on begin play, it gets our data manager or our data layer manager and on the box trigger on component overlap, it is going to take data layer 02 and set it to activated. And so basically what that's gonna do is it's going to make data layer two visible, which is the house. But it's not just the house. See, data layers aren't specific to just static meshes. Anything that you can bring inside of your editor can be put into a data layer. So while the house itself is a static mesh, inside we have lights and we have another blueprint trigger. This blueprint trigger does not exist if data layer two isn't active. So then this uh, blueprint here, as you can guess, loads the next one, but it does also unload the first one. So it's gonna load data layer three, but unload data layer one. And we can see exactly what's on data layer three by hiding data layer two. So you can see, here's another blueprint. And you can probably guess this is going to activate layer four. But in if only data layer one is active, that trigger box doesn't exist. So the player could run and jump through this area as much as they please, but until data layer three, 
becomes active, this blueprint, this trigger box, does absolutely nothing. And so like I said, that is going to activate data layer four, which was our furniture, and you can see that pop in. And so with this open, I'm gonna play through it one more time real quickly and just kind of keep an eye on these so that you can see everything happening in real time. So right now we just have data layer one, and now we have data layer one and two. Now this trigger box on the stairs, like I said, it's going to load data layer three, but unload data layer one. So now we can see that happening over in our data layers window. And if we turn around and walk backwards, you can actually see the furniture pop in. There it goes. So that is all of the data layers happening in real time. So you don't have to worry about things like loading screens or things like that if you're making a level with data layers. And so now that we have an idea of what data layers do, let's take a look at how to work with them. And I'm gonna show you by adding a fifth data layer to this area in which we're gonna take this little area and we're gonna make a bedroom out of it. And so what I'm gonna do is inside of our data layer window here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click, create new data layer with assets and data layer. Now it is gonna ask you to save this data layer asset somewhere. And I do recommend uh, something that I've done here already is I have a folder specifically for my data layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this DL underscore zero five, and we can go ahead and save that. And now over here in our window, you can see DL05 is added. Now, in order to make sure that the assets that we're putting into our viewport are going into this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on it, and you can see that it pops up next to it and it says current. And the tooltip will say new actors will attempt to be added to this data layer, which is exactly what we want. The other thing that we wanna do is for us specifically in this example, I do wanna come down here and set the initial runtime state to loaded. Now you do have three options here. There's unloaded, loaded, and activated. And basically what that means is anything that's unloaded, those assets are not in memory. If we have it set to loaded, which is what we're gonna use for this, the assets that we put into this data layer will be loaded into memory, but they won't be visible, but they will be ready to be called. And then the last one is activated. And activated means that at runtime, anything in that data layer will be loaded and visible. And so with data layer five set as our current, uh, let's go ahead and just make a quick little bedroom here. I'm not gonna do anything super crazy uh, just cause I don't want this to be real long. And we can go ahead and drag a bed in here. Flip this around and just kind of move it into place. And maybe we need a rug. This should work. And we'll go ahead and rotate this around and just kind of put it into place. And we'll pull it out here. And so also inside of our bedroom, I do want a dresser. And the pack that I have, uh, this is called a commode. And there we go. So we've got a bed, we've got a rug. And just for the heck of it, let's throw a lamp on the dresser. And just to show you that this is more than just static meshes, I am gonna also go into my light and I'll get a little spotlight here. All right, so now we also have this little lamp inside of our bedroom. And we can test to make sure that those assets are in that specific data layer uh, by just simply toggling this on and off. And now we need a way to call this. So what I'm gonna do is 
I have a folder also for blueprints and one specifically for the ones that are gonna load my data layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new blueprint. And this doesn't have to be done with trigger boxes. You can do this with gameplay tags, game queue notifies, however you wanna execute this is entirely up to you. But just for the sake of the tutorial, I am going to be using uh, box triggers. And well, it looks like I was already doing this before, so I'm just gonna call this underscore five and it'll be fine. So inside of our blueprint, I'm gonna go ahead and get a box trigger or box collision. And that's all I need to do in the viewport. I can get rid of our event tick and we're just gonna use our event begin play. And we need our data layer manager. And we're gonna use this box trigger on the component begin overlap. And what we're gonna do is we are going to set a data layer runtime state. We'll disconnect that and run that to our box trigger. And so we want this to be data layer five and we want it to be activated. When the level starts, we currently have this runtime state set to loaded, which means all of those assets, all the bed, the rug, the dresser, the lamp, the light, it's all loaded in and ready to go. Now we just have to activate it. And so I can go ahead and close this window out. And I want this trigger, let's say we'll put it at the top of the attic stairs. Now something to keep in mind is right now, currently we were on data layer 05. And if I were to put this box trigger here right now, well, the box trigger to load data layer five would be on data layer five. And so it wouldn't actually be loaded in. So if we wanna switch between data layers, I do want this in data layer four. So I can go ahead and double click on data layer 04 and that'll make it my current. And now, I can bring this box trigger in and we'll set it here. And so now we can see if we hide data layer five, our box trigger is still there. And just to make sure that it is on data layer four, we can toggle that as well. So now we can go ahead and hit play. And we know that that data layer is up there, the bed, the rug, the dresser, and things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and speed run this a little bit. So we're gonna run it through our tunnel and get our house. We can run into the house and hit our trigger to load the outside. And then we can run outside to load our stuff on the inside. And so now we don't have our bedroom yet, but we did put that trigger at the top of the stairs. So if I walk up here, you can see over here in our data layer outliner, data layer five is now active. And if we go back downstairs, we can see that we do have our bedroom and our light with the actual light itself. And now one of the last things that I wanna show you before we wrap things up here is how to work with assets that have functionality, uh, especially those that are auto activated. And so what I wanna do is when we get rid of data layer one, which has our arena, and we add in our data layer three that has our landscape, I wanna add in some sort of ambience. And I do already have an audio file here that's just some birds and just kind of naturey sounds and so what I'm gonna do is I want that audio to come in when data layer 3 pops in so I'm gonna go ahead and double click on DLO 3 over here to make sure that that is my current data layer and I'm going to add an audio volume and we're just gonna 
real quick put this into place. So now we have an audio volume around our house. And inside of our details panel, I'm going to go ahead and add audio and select our audio. And just to kind of give this a little bit of a fade in, we're going to come over here to our ambient zone settings. And we're just going to kind of give this a little bit of a fade. So we'll call this one second. Our low pass is one second. There we go. And so now, so now again, like we saw, uh, to test and make sure this is on the correct data layer, I can go ahead and hide that data layer. And now if we hit play, we didn't do any settings to that audio file. It is set to auto activate. But because we haven't loaded in that audio volume yet, it's not active. So let's go ahead and run upstairs. And this is going to trigger data layer three. And we should hear that uh, those bird ambiences fade in. And so as long as data layer three stays active, that sound will also stay active, even if we load the other data layers that we had created. And so this is actually going to be the same for things like level sequences, any blueprints that you have tied to the on begin play, uh, which I do have. So this is my blueprint to load data layer four and it's using the begin play, but because this is on data layer three, like I'd mentioned before, without this active, the player can run through that area as much as they want, but because that data layer is not loaded in, they'll never hit it. All right, guys, so that is going to wrap things up for this video. Hopefully you found this video on data layers informative. And let me know in the comments below, one, what you guys want to see me cover next. And two, if you've used data layers, what are some creative ways that you've used them? If you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, you will find a link in the description below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you never miss out on any future content. Until next time.